Welcome to St James's this Sunday morning when we're live streaming or later in the day or during the week. A particular welcome if you are new to St James and have found us one way or another on the internet. Normally we would meet in our church in Hampton Hill but for now, wherever and whenever you are, a very warm welcome. During the week I was challenged to think about what we're doing when we're meeting in this way and I celebrate communion and you watch. Without wishing to go into it all too deeply, I refer you back to the Book of Common Prayer, 1662. The writers of the prayer book recognised that there would be situations in which a person might not be able to receive Holy Communion, the bread and wine, even though they were present when the elements were consecrated. The prayer book says that such a person, if they follow the service, quotes, doth eat and drink the body and blood of our Saviour Christ, prophet to his soul's health, although he did not receive the sacrament with his mouth. So while there is a sadness about not being able to share the physical bread and wine, there is no sense in which we need to feel that God is not able to give us the spiritual sustenance that we look for in this service. You might wonder what is on the backdrop this week. On Monday, Thursday, before Easter, we remember Jesus with his disciples in the upper room. Uh, we were back there or somewhere near for an occasion when Jesus met the disciples on Easter Sunday in the evening and then the following week with Thomas. And at the moment, this lectionary is looking towards the departure of Jesus on Ascension Day. And so it takes us back to those farewell words from Maundy Thursday. So last week we were in John 14, and this week we will read on from John 14. And then, when we come to Pentecost, we will find the disciples all gathered in a room together. No one knows where such an important meeting place it was or is in Jerusalem. No one's exactly sure. But scholars believed it was in the area south of the temple, in an ordinary house like one of these here. Shall we begin? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you, and also with you. Alleluia! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia! So let's sing our first hymn. In our readings we'll be thinking about Jesus' challenge to love and to obey him. And so now in our song, we're going to think about how Jesus calls us to go and serve him in the world. I, the Lord of sea and sky.
in a moment we're going to ask for God's forgiveness. So let's pause for a moment to reflect on what we're asking God to forgive. Christ died to sin once for all, and now he lives to God. Let us renew our resolve to have done with all that is evil, and confess our sins in penitence and faith. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour, in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, for our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Collect of this Sunday. Risen Christ, by the lakeside you renewed your call to your disciples. Help your church to obey your command and draw the nations to the fire of your love to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Now Jackie is going to read to us the Gospel for today and then Sylvie will help us to learn from it and hear God's Word. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. If you love me, you will keep my commandments and I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned, I am coming to you. In a little while the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me and those who love me will be loved by my father and I will love them and reveal myself to them. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Hello and welcome from my living room as we continue with this uh, lockdown arrangements. I'm going to be focusing on the passage that we've just heard read from John's Gospel. But before we do so, let's just say a prayer together. Dear Lord, help us to see you more clearly, love you more dearly and follow you more nearly day by day. Now, in today's Gospel, John continues with Jesus' words at the Last Supper. You might remember from last week that Jesus had been talking to the, to the disciples, encouraging their belief and encouraging them to pray. Well, now he comes to talk about love and obedience and the Holy Spirit. In fact, love and obedience top and tail this short passage that we have. If you love me, Keep my commandments, says Jesus. And then again at the end, whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. So the message is simple enough. Our love for Jesus 
is shown in our obedience to him. If we just say, I love you, Lord, when we pray in church on Sundays, but never go back to him in the week and listen to his commands and follow them, well, then we're not really being fully true to our faith. So what is the primary command that Jesus gives us? Well, you may remember from a couple of chapters earlier that Jesus gives us a new command. And that command is to love one another as he has loved us. That's how we show our love for Jesus. And that's how the world knows that we are his followers. That's what it's called, what it means to be called a church, that we love one another in community. Of course, loving one another isn't always so easy. Sometimes we get things wrong. Sometimes we annoy one another. We have differing opinions. We may even argue. But we need to see the big picture because beyond all of that, we're called to love one another. Now, in my prayer life, I sometimes use a, a way of praying that was taught to us by St Ignatius of Loyola, who was a 16th century priest. And he encourages us to spend a few minutes at the end of the day, reviewing all the things that have happened and thinking about where was God in our day and thinking too about where we may not have been living up to our faith as much as we might want. Thinking about our shortcomings. Well, praying this way, which is called the examine of conscience, can be a very helpful thing. And if we follow the passage from today, one question that we might consider in that examine is this. We might ask ourselves, in what ways today did I or did I not love? So how have I loved today? How have I shown my love for others and my love for God? And if we did love somebody, then we can thank God and enjoy that because we've been taken into God's plans and purposes for us. And if we didn't, or if we remember when we were maybe a little bit grumpy with someone or didn't quite be as we should have been, then we can ask God for, obviously for forgiveness, but we can ask God for other opportunities to show that love the next day. And in that way, we can begin to follow Jesus's commands a bit closer. But we're not just called to love, we're also called to be loved. The one who loves me will be loved, says Jesus. Now, if it's sometimes hard to love others, it's often even harder to let others love us. We are happy to help those in need very often, but when help is offered to us, well, we might end up saying, oh, don't worry, I'll manage, I'm all right. We don't like to feel ourselves to be a burden or dependent on others. <clears throat> In my family, we have a bit of a running joke because if anybody offers somebody a lift in their car to the station, the answer invariably is, oh, no, don't worry, I'm happy to walk. And it takes several uh, offers for somebody to eventually uh, uh, admit that they do want a lift because nobody likes to be a burden. Nobody likes to put anybody else out. But loving one another and being loved is all of one piece. How can we love one another as Jesus intended if nobody is willing to be loved? In these days of lockdown, being open to others loving us, to caring for us, is all the more important. So if you want some help but are reluctant to ask, just think that when you are asking someone, you're actually doing them a favour because you're giving them an opportunity to fulfil Christ's command. We're not called to be alone, nor to struggle by ourselves. Being church means being there for one another. That we're not called to be alone is also shown by Jesus' promise to send the Holy Spirit. In the Gospel story, Jesus knows that he's soon to leave the disciples. He'll be crucified, 
he'll rise again, but then he'll return to the Father in heaven. And so he reassures the disciples and us as we follow on that we will not be left as orphans. Jesus asked the Father to send the Holy Spirit to live with us and to live in us. Now we can't get closer to God than that. We're being drawn into the very heart of God. The Holy Spirit is described here as an advocate, but elsewhere he's also described as a comforter, a healer, a counsellor, a helper. He's the one who sustains us through the ups and downs of everyday life and enables us to live out our faith. And just as we can call on one another for help, so we can also call on the Holy Spirit to guide us in the ways of God and to guide us in the way of love. So, as we come and in, go into this coming week, our gospel for today gives us both encouragement and comfort. We're encouraged to be obedient to Jesus, uh, to Jesus' call to love one another, to serve those in need whenever we can, and we know that there's a lot of need around at the moment. But we are also comforted both by our church family who show us love and also by Jesus himself through the Holy Spirit, who is as close to us as our very breath every moment of every day. And indeed, as it, as it says in 1 John 4, we love because he first loved us. So let's go into this week obedient, encouraged, but also comforted by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Leslie is going to lead our prayers. Drawn by the Holy Spirit, let us pray together for the Church and for the world. Father, we pray at this difficult time that your Spirit of Truth may breathe fresh courage and assurance into the Church, so that leaders and people are empowered to bring the love of God into the lives of others in new and innovative ways. We pray for Christians across the world who are seeking to do your will and fulfil your commandments, often in challenging circumstances, and especially those who feel abandoned and alone. May they with us know that we dwell in you and you in us. We commend to your love our Archbishop Justin Sarah and Graham are bishops, Derek, Jackie, Julian and Sylvie here at St James, and give thanks for all those whose contributions week by week have enabled us to continue to worship you in this place. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, at the end of this Christian Aid Week, we pray that your spirit of truth may continue to inspire the charity's work as it strives to support some of the world's most vulnerable people, those suffering in poverty and hunger, who lack access to education and health care, refugees who long for justice and goodness where there is only corruption and hate. We remember especially Ramani Lethard, head of Christian AIDS programme in Asia, and her work among the one million displaced Rohingya in Bangladesh. Just as love has prompted many acts of kindness in our own communities during this pandemic, may that love also reach out to our neighbours far away and make us generous in our response to Christian Aid's call for donations. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Father, we pray that in our daily lives our vision may not be limited by present concerns, however overwhelming they may seem, but that your spirit of truth may speak and act through us to proclaim your faithful love, your graciousness and indwelling presence. Unite in love the members of local community organisations as they support those in need, remembering in particular the work of the Hampton Food Bank and Hampton and Hampton Hill Voluntary Care. Let the Holy Spirit dwell in all our homes and give us peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, make known the comforting presence of your Spirit to all who suffer, especially Michael Footer. We bring before you all victims of coronavirus and their families. We give thanks for their carers at home, in hospitals, care homes and hospices and we ask your blessing on those who seek to find a cure. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for those who have died and commend them to your safekeeping forever. We remember with gratitude Betty Stewart, whose anniversary falls this week, and from whose generosity we as a parish have so greatly benefited. We bring to mind all those key workers from doctors to bus drivers who have lost their lives to COVID-19, including the Reverend Peter Holmes, Vicar of St Peter's Norbiton, who worked tirelessly to support the homeless and elderly in the borough of Kingston. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we thank you for the generosity of your love and ceaseless care. May we always feel your spirit of truth abiding in us, bringing us acceptance, strength and peace. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's sing our second hymn, O Jesus, I Have Promised.
The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Almighty and Eternal Father, and in these days of Easter to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell and restored in men and women the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise and opened to them the gate of life eternal. And so, in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and the powers of all creation sing forever the hymn of your glory. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, Help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven, through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread.
Alleluia. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast. Alleluia. God our Father, whose Son Jesus Christ gives us the water of eternal life, may we thirst for you the spring of life and source of goodness, through him who is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. And we pray together using some of the words that Sylvie used earlier in the service. Thanks be to you, our Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits which you have given us, for all the pains and insults which you have borne for us. Most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may we know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. Amen. God the Father, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, strengthen you to walk with him in his risen life and the blessing of God Almighty the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always Amen we are raised to new life with Christ live in his peace Alleluia Alleluia thanks be to God Alleluia Alleluia spending time with us today. If you're watching live on Sunday morning there's a virtual coffee morning over on Zoom for half an hour or so straight away. The link you need uh, to gain access was in the email that went out on Saturday. This week as well as the prayer course on Wednesday and the Bible study on Thursday we're celebrating Ascension Day and I'm going to conduct a short communion service at 8.30 in the morning as a trial back in the church. And that, of course, will be live on Facebook and available later after the event. Then in the evening, Sandra and I will pray the Compline service at 9.30 in the evening. And I will provide a short homily. And of course, on Thursday, there's also the coffee morning at 10.30. We're at the end of Christian Aid Week, so thank you to all who've given to Christian Aid. Of course, it's never too late to drop envelopes into the vicarage to be counted. Thursday Ascension Day marks the beginning of Thy Kingdom Come, uh, international 10 days of prayer before Pentecost. 
as you might expect it's all rather last minute this year. So I suggest you search online for Thy Kingdom Come uh, and you can also look on the diocesan website, London Diocese you would type in. And there are a number of various resources for prayer, a really exciting augmented reality prayer trail for children, a uh, variety of apps to help with prayer and services each day online. It remains important that we stay in touch, care and pray for each other. I'm very encouraged in the way that I hear people are ringing one another and supporting and doing practical things by way of help. Uh, we're no means out of the lockdown and so it's still important to bear in mind that some people feel more isolated and lonely are struggling with life. So, as ever, when we come to share the peace, as well as sharing the peace with your screen, remember that you're sharing peace with others, uh, friends from St James, neighbours, colleagues, and perhaps take the opportunity after the service and the coffee morning finishes to wish them well and God's peace. So reach out and bless them. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia! The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. Alleluia!